Good morning, chaps. Welcome along to the vlog. Today, we are going to be bottling some of the vacant gesture and some of the stout. Ready for crimbo. We also need to make some proof of concept so we can bottle that as well. Whether that's going to be ready for Christmas or not, I don't know. We may just have to bottle that out of an existing cask. We'll see. So let me t uh, t t t t <laughs> let me stick you on the tripod. Chance is tap dancing. Let me stick you on the tripod and we'll focus down and do some calculations for carbonating the bottles and then I'll show you the bottling setup and we'll run through it. Right then folks, as you may or may not know, we've discussed this subject in length in a previous video, recently actually, and uh, while there are still some people holding on to alternative views, they've not shown me any science or evidence behind it yet, so we're going to stick with the tried and tested one that is science backed. Now there's something that's going to ruffle a few feathers I'm sure. So the beer that we've got is of course the Vacant Gesture and our target carbonation for this beer is uh, 2.2 volumes. So we're, uh, let's do it all on here actually. So we're looking for 2.2 vols of CO2 and what we're going to do is transfer the beer into a cask before we go ahead and um, put it into bottles to allow us to mix in the sugar solution that we're about to create and a cask holds 40 litres so we'll punch that number into our little calculator here on Brewer's Friend so we've got 40 litres and the volumes of CO2 we're looking to achieve is 2.2 and the temperature of the beer TEMP is 5 degrees centigrade so we'll enter that in, this is obviously where all the conjecture is and we will press update so for 40 litres of beer at 5 degrees to achieve 2.2 volumes of CO2 we are going to require 123 grams of dextrose so what we're going to do is weigh that out put it into a jug like quit and then pop it in the microwave so indeed the whole shebang melts down into a nice sugary syrup and then we'll pour that into the cask and then when it's in the cask we'll fill the cask up as the cask fills it will cause turbulence and mixing so that that sugar solution is distributed throughout the beer and then we'll take the beer out of the cask into the bottle filler and ultimately into the bottles so let's go and do it so here we go our very scientific method is about to prove itself so we want 123 grams of this beautiful looking dextrose there's 47 and there's 82 and we're getting close, 123 is what we're looking for actually 23, wow look at that so we now have approximately 123 grams of dextrose I've popped in a little bit of warmish water to see uh, the sugar dissolve and then we're just going to go straight into our trusty microwave and Let's get it up to, or above, 80 degrees is where I usually go for. And then we know it's pretty much been pasteurised. If you do accidentally get it to boiling, you'll possibly burn the sugar or just make a mess in your microwave. So I think 80 degrees is sufficient. So while Gemma is sanitising some bottles over here, with this, you've seen these before, you can buy these on the homebrew shops, they're pretty cheap. Bottle tree, bottle sanitizer. This is the Browland uh, bottle filler. It was Browland that I bought this from a long time ago. Uh, so that's just sat with sanitizer in it at the moment to keep it all clean. Down here we've got a filling hose to transfer the beer out of the tank, which is here ready to go into these casks. So I've got this cask on an auto tilt on a cask lift. 
So the idea behind this is we fill the cask up by gravity down here. We're going to put our sugar in there in a moment. In fact, let's do that now. So we'll take our sugar solution. We're going to pour that into the cask. This cask has been sanitized. And then we're going to go ahead and fill up the cask with beer. And that will mix all of that sugar solution in. And then we're going to tap the front of it. We're going to raise it up on this cask lift. And then that will be able to gravity feed into the bottle filler from being up here, if you like. So all I need to do now is fill that cask up. And then we can move on to stage two. Or stage three. I can't remember. Right, so you'll be able to see now that we've got beer coming out of this tank. It's running through that pipe. It's just sat in the bucket because that's where the sanitizer was. And then it is indeed running straight into that cask that we've got sat on the cask tilt. So when that's full, we'll show you what the next step is. Right, the next job, now we've got that cask filled with our beer and our sugar solution. We're gonna get a cast tap. We're gonna make sure it's closed, because we've all done that before. And we're gonna tap the front of it. Like that. And then you'll notice in the top, I've popped a spile in the top, but I've pinged a hole in it so it can breathe. And then we're gonna reposition the whole shebang we're going to reposition the whole thing next to our bottling station. Just move this out of the way. So now I'm going to wind the cask up to the top. keep an eye on everything and then we've got bottles on here at the moment we've got bottles on here just kind of full of sanitizer in order for us to make sure the whole bottling mechanism is, is clean and sanitized so I'm going to take all these bottles off we'll stick them there for a second of that bit of sanitizer as well and then we're going to empty the sanitizer out of the bottle filler like so then we're going to attach a hose to the outlet of the cask not forgetting, of course, the hot filter. Oh, I've been a bugger, I'll come back to that in a second. Instead what we'll do is get the other side of the hose onto the back of the filler, like so. That's good. And we'll pop the lid on to prevent any bits of dust, or me, or flies or anything like that, not that there's any flies in here today that will prevent them getting in there there we go, we've got that sorted right, and then if I can rotate this round a little bit more so it's not kind of as in my face as it looks there we go so all we need to do now 
is open the pipe and then what's going to happen is the beer is going to flow eventually into our bottling machine. We just need to make sure that it doesn't get airlocked, which so often happens with these machines. Oh, and let's also keep the tap open, Terry. You know. There we go, so that beer is now flowing in there. This first little bit of beer, there is a possibility of some oxidation happening there as it's running past the float valve but 90% of the beer uh, doesn't have that problem because that float valve will eventually become submerged below the uh, surface of the beer as you can see now. There we go. So that is now underneath, underneath the surface so there's no more contact with oxygen. Because I've not used this for a while I'm just going to leave the lid off until we see exactly where this level comes to because sometimes it can overflow in the corner and it looks like it might do yeah so what I'm gonna have to do is just get into this little uh, there's a fitting on the back here so I just want to open this fitting and just slide the ball valve down ever so slightly so that it's now at a lower level, meaning that the valve will close sooner. And I'm hoping that that will have solved the problem. Right, it's still creeping over a little bit. So let me just try again. Once you've got this machine set up, it's kind of set up for good and you shouldn't have to set it up again. So, pop a bottle on. So this first bottle has a little bit of sanitizer in it from the middle of the pipe. So it's pulling the beer through the sanitizer, through the pipe, getting rid of the sanitizer, and then we're just gonna scrap that. So it's basically just about half a bottle for each of the pipes here. And then we can have a look now that we've dropped that level a bit more as to where our equilibrium is going to finish and if it seems a little bit low then we'll uh, adjust it again but that looks to me like it's stopped I think so so let's get some bottles on so there's bottle number one bottle number two and bottle number three. There we go. As you can see, everything now is going to work nicely. And then these are also calibrated at the front. But you just wash these three gem again. They just need emptying. So when we take that bottle off, where the dip tube was previously, has now taken the level of the bottle to just kind of below the collar there meaning that uh, we get the same fill depth every time on this and that's adjusted with these screws on the front of the bottle filler here there we go so that's first three bottles done when Gemma's available, she'll be capping them at the same time. Uh, but yeah, we'll put yellow caps on these, darling. But as you can see, you really can fly through it. It's definitely quicker than the old bottling wand, wouldn't you say, boys and girls? Definitely quicker. So let's get a few close-up shots of the bottles going on. There's one, you just need to hold it for a second so we get a little bit of beer in the bottom of the bottle. And then that little bit of beer acts as a counterbalance 
to lock the collar of the bottle into the metalwork at the top of the bottle filler, meaning that the bottle can't drop and slide away. You can see on this one, I can take my hand away, that little bit of beer is ballast to act as a tipping point for the system. And you can see we're absolutely flying through them now. In fact, Gemma's I'm going to have to pause for a moment so we can start the capping process because you can really get quite in front with this. And here we go. So Gemma's going to cap the bottles and then we're going to have to go and find another table in a minute actually for all these bottles to go on to so we can in fact uh, let the bottoms of them dry before we label and then box them all. Okay, so I'll stand back a little bit so you can kind of get a nice shot as to exactly what's going on here. We've got the cask lift with a cask on the top, the auto tilt to help us get the majority of the beer out into the bottle filler. We've got a bottle washer and a bottle tree to provide us with clean bottles for the filler, a drip tray there, then a capping machine and caps and then we've pulled this other trolley out and on the back we've just put some cardboard on the base a couple of bits of wood so we don't put the too close to the edge and drop any bottles on the floor and then we can get 11 bottles in a row so makes easy math to count how many we do so I think we're going to get around 70 odd bottles out of here you should in theory get 8500 ml bottles because it's a 40 litre cask but there are losses in the system you saw me take a little bit off at the start. And Gemma's about to start filling another bottle tree while she's waiting for me to start filling the bottles with beer. But I don't think she'll have time because when that gets going, that gets going quick and she'll struggle to keep up with me capping. So there we go, I'm just gonna set the camera up. We'll set the camera up over here somewhere nice so you can kind of get a view without being obstructed too much. Uh, and I'll let it roll with a bit of music on top. Cue some music that somebody will know don't complain about. We've emptied that other beer out. Yes, I will be rinsing the floor down. That makes no difference to me because I've been studying beer for 20 minutes. So all that vacant two casks worth has been bottled. What I've also done as well 
is actually rig up the cold room with an oil filled radiator inside it running off the STC I've set it to 20 20 degrees it's getting up there really quickly and that's where we're going to put the beers to carbonate warm up to 20 and carbonate and at the minute now we're just about to start putting the stout out of this tank into the uh, the casking barrel so I've just got to rinse this barrel out we'll put some more sugar in there we'll fill it up with stout and then it's basically the same thing over again we'll start to fill the bottles up with stout instead of vacant and when I've done two casks worth of stout then we'll be packing up for the day because that's all we have available for us to cask I've got bitter but we're not going to be putting bitter into bottles this Christmas uh, but we are going to do the proof of concept when I've got some in a tank and there's the aftermath folks so we've managed to get some stout into bottle check that there's just a little example and the rest of it is all in the now warm room that's how many boxes we've got I think uh, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 26 in total 13 of each stout and uh, vacant and there they go they can sit in here now until they're carbonated we've jerry rigged up a little oil filled radiator and when the front is on, this sits at 20 degrees quite readily. So I've just hosed down all the floor. All I have to do tomorrow is just rinse this hose pipe out, put everything away. And then what we're going to do is uh, tomorrow afternoon get a load of ingredients out ready for next week. Where we will be then brewing and filling up, hopefully, all eight tanks again. So it'll be either eight brew days in a row or a couple of doubles we shall see anyway I'm gonna nip up to the pub uh, enjoy a few hunky dories and a couple of proofs of concept I think and we'll pick up the vlog again on tomorrow's episode we'll see you then cheers mm -hmm.